Welcome to my fourth video on circuits and my second video on Kirchhoff's laws. In my last video, we talked about Kirchhoff's loop rule. And in this video, we're going to use Kirchhoff's loop rule twice. And I'm also going to introduce you to Kirchhoff's junction rule. And before I get started, I want to introduce myself. My name is Chris and I'm the creator of all the videos here at Math Meeting. And I want to let you know that if you need any extra help with your homework, uh, send me pictures and email me pictures to homework solutions at mathmeeting.com and I will get back to you immediately with a quote. Or if you just want live tutoring, um, send me an email to live tutoring at mathmeeting.com and we can set something up. But let's get started right away with this example. All right, so here in this example, we're going to use Kirchhoff's laws to find the current running through this circuit. All right, we're going to use Kirchhoff's laws to find the current. And two of Kirchhoff's laws, one of them is the junction rule. Uh, the junction rule states that the, the sum of the currents going into a junction is equal to the sum of the current coming out of a junction. And the loop rule, which we talked about in my last video, um, says that if you go in a loop, that the sum of all of the voltage changes in that loop is equal to zero. And this will all make a lot more sense once we get started with this example. Um, so let's not waste any more time and let's get started right away. All right, so the first thing I like to do, step number one, is to set the direction of the current. All right, so let me show you what I mean by setting the direction of the current. And notice how we have these two junctions or these two nodes, and there's gonna be current that goes into these junctions and there's gonna be a current that comes out of these junctions. We don't know the direction at the moment, so it doesn't matter which direction uh, you point the current, because if you point the wrong direction, then you'll just get a negative value uh, later on in your calculations, which indicates that you just need to point the current in the opposite direction. All right, so let's just say that for this node here at the top, uh, let's say that we have current coming into it from the left. We'll call this current I1. Let's say we have uh, a, the current coming out of it on the right. We'll call this uh, current I2. And let's say we have current coming down. We'll call this current I3. All right, so now let's do the same thing with this junction here at the bottom. Well, we know that if I1 is pointing to the right for the top junction, that it must be pointing to the left or going out of the bottom junction so it continues going in the same direction. So here we have I1, and we know that I2, if it's pointing right um, in the top node, that it has to be pointing left when it gets finally gets to the bottom node. And we know that I3 is pointing down and it's gonna continue pointing down once it goes down this branch. So here we have I3. All right, and once again, we don't know if these currents are pointing in the right direction, but we'll find that out later on if we get any negative values. But this brings us to step number two. Um, step number two is to make some equations using the junction rule. All right, so the junction rule, which I abbreviated JR, uh, states that the sum of the currents going in is equal to the sum of the currents going out. And this is the, this equation I already wrote for us. Notice how this I1, this current, which is going into our junction, it's pointing into our node, is equal to all of the currents going out, I2 and I3. Notice how I2 and I3 are going out of our junction. And the same thing is happening with this junction here on the bottom of the screen. We have, we have I2 and I3, which are going in, and we have I1, which is going out. So I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. All right, so now we wrote one equation using the junction rule. Um, now let's write some more equations using the loop rule. All right, so the loop rule states that the sum of all of the voltages around a loop is equal to zero. Um, so notice how we have two loops in this circuit. We have a loop on the left-hand side. We'll call this loop one. And we have a loop on the right-hand side. We'll call this loop two. And there's, also, all, there's actually a third loop that we can use around the entire circuit, but we don't need to do that because we'll find out everything we need just using these two loops. And it doesn't matter which direction 
clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, as long as you keep your signs correctly, it doesn't matter which direction you use in the loop. So we, I chose clockwise and we just gotta make sure that we keep our signs correct. All right, so let's use the loop rule for loop number one. I'll abbreviate the loop rule with an LR. And once again, the loop rule states that the sum of all the voltages is going to be equal to zero. So if we start here on the bottom left-hand side of our loop, and if we go clockwise, we're gonna go up through this battery. And if we go from negative to positive, that indicates a positive value for voltage. So we're gonna have a positive 10. So we have a positive 10 volts. I'm not gonna put a V. I'm gonna leave my units out just so our calculations are a little easier later on. All right, so we just went across the battery at a positive 10. And if we keep going around our loop, um, notice how we have another voltage change once we cross this resistor. All right, and the, the voltage change for the, res for the resistor is just gonna be equal to, our, equal to the current times the resistance. All right, so our current is I3 and our resistance is five ohms. And because we're going with the current, notice how the current is pointing down and going clockwise with our loop. That indicates a negative, a negative voltage. So we're gonna have a negative I3 times our resistance of five ohms. And if we keep going around the loop, we have no other batteries or no other resistors for our voltage um, change. So we know that this is going to be equal to zero. So this is loop number one. 10 minus I3 times five is equal to zero. All right, so now let's do the same thing for this right side of our circuit, loop number two. All right, now if we start on the top right-hand part of this loop and we go clockwise, and notice how we're going from positive to negative through our battery, that indicates a negative voltage. So we are gonna have a negative 20 volts. All right, once again, I left out our units just so our calculations are a little easier. And if we keep going through um, clockwise, we're going to come across this resistor, which is equal to uh, the voltage across this resistor is going to be I2 times 10. Once again, we're going with the current because our current is pointing to the left. Uh, because we're going with the current, that's gonna indicate a negative voltage. So we're gonna have negative I2 times our resistance of 10. And if we keep going clockwise, we're gonna go up through this resistor, all right? And the voltage through that resistor is going to be equal to I3 times five, all right? And, and we're going against the current because the current is going down. Because we're going against the current, that indicates a positive voltage. So we're gonna have a positive I3 times five, and there's gonna be no other voltage changes um, throughout this loop. So all of this is going to be equal to zero. All right, so now we have a system of equations in which we can solve for I1, I2, and I3. And most systems of equations are a lot more difficult than this, so I recommend using a calculator or a computer, uh, but these are a very simple system of equations which we can easily do by hand. Um, this second equation here in the middle, we only have one unknown, so we can solve for I3 quite easily. If we add five I3 to both sides, we get I3 is equal to 10 over five, or I3 is going to be equal to two, or two amps. All right, so now that we know that I3 is equal to two amps, we know that we chose the right direction because it's positive. And we also can substitute this value of two amps anywhere we see I3 in our other equations. So we can substitute two amps in this bottom equation where we see I3. And we can also substitute two amps into our top equation, which we also see I3. All right, and once again, I left out our units of amps just to make our calculations a little easier. All right, so now let's, now let's move on to our last equation. Notice how the only unknown we have in our last equation is I2, so we can solve for I2 quite easily. And if we add uh, two times five is 10, and we add that to negative 20, and then we bring it to one side of the equation, solve for I2, we get that I2 is going to be equal to positive 10 over negative 10, or you should, it would be equal to negative one, negative one amps. All right, so now we solve for I2, and notice how we have a negative value, which, we, which means 
that it should be pointing in the other direction. We, we chose the wrong direction for I2, which is no big deal, because a negative value going one direction is the same as a positive value going the other direction. All right, um, so now that we have a I2, and we know that it's negative one amps, now we can plug in negative one everywhere we see I2. So I'm going to erase I2 in our first equation, and I'm going to substitute it with a negative one. All right, and I think most of you can figure out what our next step is, and now we can solve for I1 because we don't have any more unknowns in our first equation. Uh, I1 is equal to negative one, plus a positive two, which is equal to positive one. So we know that I1 is going to be equal to a positive one amps. And notice how we have a positive value for our I1, which means that we did choose the right direction for the current. All right, so let's replace our diagram with all of our values. We know that I1, uh, which is going in the right direction, we know that's equal to one amp. So we have a one amp current for I1. We know that I2 is going in the wrong direction since we got a negative one amp. So it's gonna be a positive one amp going in the other direction. So we have, it's gonna be a positive one amp going in the other direction. And we know that I3 is equal to two amps. All right, and that's positive. So we know that we chose the right direction. So we're gonna keep it the same pointing down so we have two amps coming down for I2. All right, now notice how the sum of the currents going into this junction are equal to the sum of the currents going out. We have one amp from the left going in, we have one amp from the right going in, that's equal to two. And then we have the current of two amps going out. So two going in and two going out. And if we do the same thing for uh, the bottom node, now notice how we did the same thing for this bottom node. The sum of the currents going in, two amps, is equal to the sum of the currents going out. One plus one is also equal to two. So I hope this gave you a better idea on Kirchhoff's law and how to solve circuits. Um, check out my next video if you wanna keep on learning. Uh, once again, I do offer live tutoring and homework solutions. So send pictures to my email, homework solutions at mathmini.com if you want any extra help. All right, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one.